Here's an interesting question from Ketan at the Robert H. Smith Faculty of Agriculture in Israel. Is it always necessary to dilute cDNA 1 to 3 before conducting real-time PCR? Well, it's true that a large percentage of gene expression researchers dilute their cDNA prior to running reactions. Some do a 1 to 3 dilution, others say 1 to 5 is better, while at least a few individuals always do a 1 to 10. Now, playing devil's advocate are a host of researchers who insist that diluting cDNA is a waste of time, effort, and perfectly good reagent H2O. So who's right? Well, like so many things in both life and the lab, it depends. To see what I mean, let's talk for just a second about the most common reasons that some people choose to dilute cDNA. First concern, high concentration cDNA might have a negative effect on PCR, especially if it contains inhibitors carried over from the initial RNA isolation step. Mm, yes and no. It's true that inhibitors can have an impact on PCR, but cDNA tends to be fairly dilute, and so inhibiting compounds are rarely introduced into PCR at sufficient quantities to cause problems. Now that said, if the original RNA sample is really dirty or contains lots of residual chemicals from the RNA prep, such as ethanol, it's likely that the reverse transcription step itself won't be successful. So failed real-time reactions, often not caused by cDNA being dirty, but rather to an unsuccessful RT that produced little or no cDNA in the first place. That's why RNA should always be squeaky clean. Now I should mention, Reverse transcription buffers can inhibit PCR, especially if added to reactions at greater than 20% of the final volume. So if you aren't diluting cDNA, don't add more than, say, 5 microliters of the RT reaction to a 25 microliter PCR. There is a second reason people dilute cDNA, the fear that too much cDNA will cause the housekeeping gene, especially if it's a very high expressor like 18S, to appear so early during cycling that an accurate baseline can't be set. I agree this is a real concern and probably a good reason for diluting. Just be sure not to dilute so much that your target gene CTs drift into the mid-30s or later, since this can cause problems of its own. Oh, and one other note, users always have the option of limiting how much RNA goes into the initial RT reaction. To help you determine how much RNA you should use, please visit lifetechnologies.com and download a copy of the Relative Gene Expression Workflow Guide. Step 9 contains instructions on how to empirically ensure that you're using an appropriate amount of template. This document also covers most other aspects of gene expression experiments. Do you have a real-time PCR question? Just ask Tacman. Ask us on Twitter using the hashtag AskTacMan. Hit us up on Facebook or go visit lifetechnologies.com forward slash Aztacman.